In today's show, we're gonna talk about the Power Apps count function, the count rows function, the count if function, the count a function. Ah, so much counting. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk a little bit about how they work, the difference between all of them, the delegation challenges you'll have, and some of the workarounds I come up with some of the, for some of them. Some of what, some, I don't know, count. Anyway, first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, it's all about counting. You know, one, two, three. No, about the different count functions in Power Apps. There's a handful of them. There's four. I only use one with any sort of regularity, <laughs> for what it's worth. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to go through those and just make sure that you understand what's available to you. Talk a little about delegation. They all have delegation challenges. Boo. So make sure we understand that. And then finally, a little bit of like one of the things that I do to kind of work around it, which is a weird, complex explanation, but hopefully the light bulb will come on for you guys too. So shouldn't be too long. So let's just switch over to my desktop. Give it a look. Okay, so over here on my desktop, I've just added a simple SharePoint list. Now, keep in mind as we're doing this, you could be using Azure SQL, you could be using some other random data source, you could be using collections, right? It doesn't really matter. So I just pulled in one of my SharePoint lists because it had the data that I'm familiar with. And if we need to over the course explanation, maybe we'll look at the data. So the very first function, the one that I use the most, we're just going to throw a label on here, is going to be good old fashioned count rows. So count rows and then our friend doggy data. It's the new SharePoint list I've been playing with. And after a couple of seconds, it spits back 13, which is the exact number of rows I have in SharePoint. Now you notice right away it has the blue underline, the yellow triangle, right? That means that it is not a delegable function. So if you haven't watched the delegation video, you should probably watch that up there um, before you watch this or at least after this. But long story short, what happened in this setting was it went and got the first 500 rows from the data set, not the first 500 rows that match my criteria, just the first 500 rows because it's a default setting. And then it used some JavaScript here locally in my browser to count them. It got 13. So since my data set is less than 500, all of my demos are going to be like no big deal. So one of the things that I challenge you guys to do if you're struggling to understand this or the ramifications, what I like to do is you go back over here to file and settings and change your um, advanced setting here from 500 to let's set it down to five. So then now what should happen is that any non-delegable function, you're like, oh, I still see 13. Make sure you refresh after you do it. So now I'm only going to see five. So even though there's only 13 things in my SharePoint list, because it's not delegable, SharePoint returned item one, two, three, four, and five, and then it counted the number of rows and it count, counted to five. And so that's what's going to happen there. So keep that in mind. Count rows is not delegable in this particular scenario. And so we only get back five. But what do we use count rows for now that we're not going to talk about delegation anymore? But uh, so count rows is the one I use the most often because it counts the number of rows in a table. So that table could be a data source like this. It could be a filtered data source. It could be a, um, a collection. Any type of scenario where you have table, rows of data, it can count the number of rows. And so we use this a lot for things like, hey, go query the list and get all the items that are marked as pending approval. And so then it returns those and we count it. It's like, oh, there's six left. And so then I know that I have six more approvals I need to do, right? So that's where we use it a lot is to end up with like counts of that type of stuff. We also will use it for not only counting the rows of data like that, but you know, the number of tasks I have, we'll do it for the number of records. We might use it in math. Maybe I want to calculate the average weight of all the dogs. So I need to count how many dogs I have and then add up their weight and then divide the two. So count rows, I use that one a lot. Very popular function. The second one here is a newer one, or not newer one, new one to me. So there is a count function. So if we say count doggy data, now count doggy data doesn't do anything. It gives you an error. Ah! The reason for that is because count only works on a single column table and it has to be a number. So if we do count and then wait, we're going to see that we got back five as well, because notice here, it does not tell you it's not delegable. This is why I like setting the setting down so that you can see that it is um, having a delegation challenge, even though Microsoft forgot to warn us it wasn't happening. So 
Keep that in mind. It's not delegable if it was. Now, one of the things I want to show you here, though, so if we go to file, we're going to go back to the standard of 500 for at least a few minutes. We might come back to five. But I want this because I want to be able to show you all the data and talk a little more about it. So we'll do this. We'll refresh again. Okay, so now you notice up at the top, we got for count rows, I got 13 because count rows counts all the rows in a table. Count only counts a single column table, and in this case, the weight column, which is how much all the dogs weigh, which is a number column, has to be a number column, and it only counts the rows that don't have a, or that do have a value. So if we go look at the data, right, we'll quick edit data real quick. And so I've been using this um, one a lot lately. I used, I taught five straight weeks in a row live classes. Whoa, I'm tired. Anyway, there's the weight. If you scroll to the bottom, you're going to see that the three records that I added over here for Bingo Buddy and Snoopy, they do not have a weight. So that's why we're only getting 10 back because only 10 of the 13 dogs have a value in the weight column. So count only counts the non-blank non number records. Okay, that's two. Third one here, we'll throw another label on here. And we're going to use the function called count a. And so count a, if we say doggy data dot, um, let's do last name, doggy data dot last name, we get 11 records. Same type of thing. Count a is only counting the non blank records, but this time it works with a text column. If we look at our data here, we have a last name column. And so you can see that Bingo and Buddy, two of the fake dogs I was adding during a demo, like I just happen to have them, do not have last names. So count A is only returning the 11 dogs that have a value in the last name in the count. Now, also, once again, as you might probably can guess, this is not a delegable function. So in a second, when we turn the delegation back down to five, we're going to see five, but it's not warning us that it's not delegable. Shame, shame, shame. But so count A, um, I'll be honest, I have never used count or count A in any of my apps ever. Um, I can see the purpose, especially like if you're trying to do like Excel like functions and you're, you're just used to that logic. But I don't, I don't think in that terms of like, hey, I need to get all the rows back that, or count all the rows that don't have a blank number or text. I, I just don't think that way, um, but you could. And I believe that count A, let's check. I don't know. Does count A work with number columns? It should. Yep, it went back to 10. That's good. And what about does it work with other types? Like is a good dog. So that one is a uh, yes, no, or a Boolean column. And so they all have a value. Okay. So it looks like count A is pretty flexible on the different columns that are work. What about if we do collar color? So collar color is a, um, a choice column. All right, they only, only 10 of them have colors. Okay, so count A, pretty flexible. There you go. Like I said, I've never used it. First time I've ever tried that. Shh, I probably shouldn't try things for the first time in a video, but I do. All right, one more, and then we're going to talk about a, a little side piece. So here, if you do the last one, it is called count if. So count if, doggy data, and then we say wait is greater than 100. So this should be two of my dogs. Chewy and uh, Max are both over 100 pounds. There you go. So count if allows you to give a data source and then do a uh, Boolean exp or an expression, right? The same as you would do like with filter. So count if, you know, and then filter out where weight is greater than 100. And if we do here, it looks like there's an optional parameter. And so we could continue to add on to that, but we're not going to mess with that. So count if is also one I've never used. Um, and the reason for that is, well, A, it's non-delegable, as you can see here. And really, that's the main reason I don't use it. But what I want to show you guys now is there's two more sides of this. So one is this count if. So if I don't ever use it, how do I count records with specific criteria? I'm glad you asked. So first, let's prove it's not delegable. So we're going to go back over here to File, Settings, and then Advanced. And we're going to set this back to 5, OK? And so when we set this back to five, and then we refresh the data, we should see lots of fives coming in our lives. Five, five, and one. Now, we only get one here. Because remember, when it's not delegable, and count if it's not, it got the first five dogs back. Chewy, Apollo, or sorry, Chewy, Adeline, Apollo, Clay, and Finn. 
And if you look at their weights, only one of them is over 110 pounds. Even though Max, who is record number six, is taunting us right there. We didn't count Max with count if. So, kind of a bummer. Ready? So instead of count if, what I always do, like 100% of the time, I didn't even, I've never, never used count if either, I don't think, can't remember using it, is you can say instead, I want to filter, ah, filter doggy data where weight is greater than 100, right? And we know that that is delegable. So like if we take this, I guess maybe to do it, if we take this and throw it in a, a gallery real quick, sorry, right here, throw a gallery, throw this in here, right? We got Chewy and Max, okay? And if we change this to be their weight, you could see that I'm not lying to you, they both threw over 100. Okay, so that is a delegable thing. So what I want you to know though, is because that is delegable, then that means SharePoint did the work. What if we then just turn around and count rows on this? What are we gonna get? We're gonna get an itchy nose. I just edited that out, but I have to scratch my nose. Um, we get two. Okay, so this is a little complicated. You gotta put your thinking cap on with me for a second to understand what's happening here. So the filter portion is delegable. So I said, hey, SharePoint, do this. SharePoint went and got all the records that had um, weight over 100, which is two of them. So it got the two records you'd expect. It then returned them to count rows who said, give me all the date, all the rows that you got back from that filter function up to the delegation limit. So since two was less than five, it got back both records and then it locally counted the two rows and that's why we see a two here. So as long as your filter criteria returns a number less than the delegation limit, you can use count rows this way and it is delegable, right? You, you are counting all the records. But if I change my delegation record over here just to kind of maybe hopefully help, if I change this to one, so this would mean it will only get back one record, right, for a non-delegable query, which count rows is not, what we're going to see is that if we now do this and we say refresh, we're going to drop down to one. So what happened in this scenario? SharePoint filtered out the data. It found the two dogs. SharePoint said, hey, I got data. And count rows says, well, only give me back data to the delegation limit. So the delegation limit is one. So SharePoint only sent the first record across the wire and then it counted the one and it showed you the one. I know, that's a little complicated. Watch, it, watch that explanation like four or five times. I, I feel good about the explanation, but I understand it's different. Why this is so important. A lot of times you guys are like, hey, my SharePoint list has 5,000 items in it but really I only need to count the number of records that are still pending and then it's only like 20 or 100 or 5,000 or sorry, 500 or 499, right? We can delegate this. We can say filter out the list of 5,000 to only return the records that are pending. So SharePoint says I found 474. And so SharePoint would send those 474 records back to SharePoint or back to Power Apps all in one swoop. And then Power Apps would count those locally, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it would get to 474, and then it would show you the number. So even though the query is not delegable, because you filtered down to a data set that was smaller than the delegation limit, it's okay. Cool. So that's one of those tricks of the trade. That's the, that's the big payoff for watching me talk about a bunch of count functions, is you have to start to think that way. You know, go with count rows, Go with, um, you know, instead of count if, count rows, filter inside, and then do it. Remember that these two, count and count A, or uh, count and count A right there, neither of those are delegable, even though it doesn't show it. Go watch the delegation video I pointed to earlier if you haven't already. Oh, hey, I was just editing the video. I forgot one thing I was going to talk about. It's a bonus thing. Um, if you're using Dataverse as your data source, Microsoft is trying to improve this story just a little. So if you go here to File and then to Settings and Advanced Settings, underneath the preview features is Enhanced uh, Delegation for Microsoft Dataverse. And so this is supposed to make count rows and count if delegable if you're using Dataverse as a data source. It's still in the early stages. I did some testing with it this morning and it was not behaving the way I expect. So I don't know, 
anyway, so if you're using Dataverse, just another little snippet here, you might want to go kick the tires and see if this will behave any better for you. Okay, anyway, back to editing. I just wanted to add this in, so go back and watch. Last little trick, right? One more bonus. So another thing that I will often do, remember that your gallery here, so we returned the data, it filtered it down. If you, right here, what you can do is say count rows and then gallery one dot all items. That is a table of all the things currently shown in the gallery. And so then that would show you two, even though my delegation limit of one, because this was delegable, right? So this happened, the, all the dogs showed up over here, yay. And so we're not counting the SharePoint data source. We're not making another network call to the, the network, which is important, right? Adding performance and speed to our app. We're just counting how many things are shown in the gallery right now. And this would always be delegable because we're counting the control. It just happens the control had been populated by a data call. <sighs> All right, that's it for today. I, not a shorter video, but that's okay. Sometimes we need shorter videos. Um, I just, you know, someone in the YouTube comments this week asked um, this exact question, like what's the difference between all these? And I was like, I would have never thought to make a video on that. So keep the ideas coming. Just put them down in the comments below. I, you know, I, I was try to respond to all the comments. I'm a little behind as usual. It happens. Um, but yeah. All right. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem is big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.